so good evening once again uh, i'll be just uh, talking uh, about the actual risk we are facing uh, as an eye care service provider and uh, i'm not actually uh, putting my thoughts at this point of time and i would just like to share uh, some published literature but i was just uh, looking at uh, one of my a school teacher friends brought to my notice uh, in the tamil nadu matriculation uh, syllabus it's not a very high syllabus uh, in the 12th standard there is a subject on uh, human physiology and in that uh, there is a sub subject on conjunctivitis and in the 12th class syllabus in the tamil nadu uh, board it is written as one of the causes of conjunctivitis is coronavirus i was very surprised uh, that uh, you know it is it is we have always been knowing this but it used to be just one part uh, of the universe you know we won't usually uh, give a lot of value to this but uh, to just give you an idea that it is not something very very new uh, coronavirus affecting the uh, eyes uh, i don't want to get into too much of technical uh, thing but i just want to uh, introduce the concept of uh, a conjunctiva associated lymphoid tissue to just give it in brief the uh, you know whenever somebody has fever they are they are often they are often uh, have seem to have something like a bloodshot eyes just like a normal fever whenever there is an inflammation of the upper respiratory tract it is natural to have some injection of the conjunctiva uh, that is actually not an infection as such but it is just due to an excitation of the inflammatory uh, cells because it is all interconnected the whole mucosal uh, pattern uh, all this the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue and in fact conjunctiva is part of the malt and that is why it might there might be a reactionary congestion uh, in some of these uh, covid cases also so i don't want to get into detail uh, we're just going to talk about uh, 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 two uh, three talks these are the three talks which uh, these are the three published uh, literature one in jama one in bjo and uh, another in ophthalmology so what is the bjo article say the bjo article very clearly the title itself is very important the importance of recognizing possible early ocular manifestation and using protective eyewear if you want to just to see through uh, this entire presentation if you want to uh look at just one slide i think this is the slide which you should see it's very essential that irrespective of the patient irrespective of you being masked with an n95 irrespective of you using a ppe you should be wearing a protective eyewear and ideally a protective eye shield uh which is outside that eyewear that is very very important Uh, either uh, before we, when you see this case and i'll just uh, come back to that uh, in the next uh, uh, few slides the other thing is uh, i'm sure you will also be having the same uh, clinical pattern we are having a lot of conjunctivitis also coming to us in this season uh, it looked as if we were seeing a lot of conjunctivitis but we looked at statistics it is not anything extraordinary this year it's just that we are extremely cautious we are extremely curious and we are giving a lot of uh, uh, special care to these patients with conjunctivitis and so we are thinking that we are seeing a lot of conjunctivitis but uh, truly with aravind statistics it's just the same amount of conjunctivitis which we uh, we are seeing in a in a routine uh, stuff so this is just the history but uh, one of the important things which is now being understood is there are a lot of strain variants which is happening in novel coronavirus also 
So if you just see a genus or species, it doesn't mean much. Like a, 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 a casual comparison can be Mahatma Gandhi is a homo sapien. Osama bin Laden is also a homo sapien. It doesn't mean that their virulence pattern is the same. So that is one thing which you need to understand when you when we tend to uh, understand why in certain countries uh, some people are dying. Is it because the organism is less virulent or is it because we fight it differently? We fight a different battle. We fight a different gorilla battle than that. What is the organism used to? So these are the general concepts which I would like you to uh, keep in mind as we proceed along. So coronavirus affecting the conjunctiva is, is very well known. In fact, in 2007, uh, the, fir the first affection of a, of a new coronavirus of 2007, even at that time it was called a new coronavirus, even that the first clinical feature was conjunctivitis followed by bronchiolitis. That was that feature of that new coronavirus. Now we are calling this as novel coronavirus. Uh, here, one difference between the MERS and the SARS, which was mentioned by Banu, is ocular involvement was not really described. Maybe they saw, but it was not a, so much of a pandemic like, uh, like COVID-19. And so uh, maybe it was not described uh, as much as what it was. But now uh, COVID-19 being uh, very popular, there, is, there have been at least uh, uh, three, if not more, published articles with regard to ocular involvement. So in COVID-19, the take home message is conjunctivitis cannot be excluded as a presenting symptom, but it is rare. See, there are uh, practically many scenarios can happen. A person who is COVID positive can come and cough uh, in close contact with an eye care uh, uh, practitioner. The possibility of that getting transmitted to the eye care uh, practitioner is there through the conjunctiva is a possibility. In fact, uh, it's very interesting that uh, one of the persons uh, in in uh, Wuhan, who was completely draped uh, in the PPE, who was also wearing an N95, who was not wearing an eye protection, got conjunctivitis followed by a COVID-19. So single take home message is you should be wearing an eye protection. You should have barriers as much as possible. Uh, between you and the patient because we see the patients in a much, much more closer contact. I have personally decided not to use direct ophthalmoscopy at all. Uh, in fact, I'm handicapped. I'm not a very uh, comfortable using a 90D, but I'm going to rely upon my associates to do uh, uh, the 90D uh, for that pattern. So possibility is social distancing as much as possible but protecting your conjunctiva by barrier uh, is also important. So the last line in the slide is important. You might wear everything, but if you don't wear a, a goggle, and that is what happened to that Chinese gentleman in Wuhan who had uh, a presentation uh, who started off with a conjunctivitis. So in general, people who wore eye protection, and this was during the MERS outbreak, a lot of sense for all eye care practitioners, including the nurses, including the doctors, to wear an eye protection uh, when you are examining this patient. So this was uh, published in ophthalmology. Now I'm going to the second study. Now they uh, here, what they did is, this is uh, the first study was in general population. The second study, which I'm going to present, is in COVID patients. So what happened uh, was they studied the uh, presence. They took a nasopharyngeal swab, and they also took 
years using Schirmer strip and they subjected both to RT-PCR. So these are proven COVID patients. But the only drawback is this nasopharyngeal swab was analyzed in a clinical laboratory while the tears were analyzed in a research laboratory. This is a fundamental flaw in any study. If you want to compare apples with apples, you should have asked all the parameters uh, in equal proportions. It did not happen in this study. So what they did was, this was on 17 patients of COVID. Nasopharyngeal swabs were taken, tear samples were taken, and the quantitative RT-PCR, which is thought to be a confirmatory test, was done. The only flaw is this was done in two different laboratories. And what did it say is of these patients, 17 patients, nobody had ocular symptoms. They, their tears were just collected. They, their tears, the idea is they just wanted to see whether the virus was shedding in tears. So in the tears, and so uh, this study, uh, they could not isolate uh, COVID-19 uh, by RT-PCR uh, from the tears. So as I said, uh, the first point is a very important point which we need to take uh, into account that it was done in two uh, different laboratories. So this is a third study, again in COVID patients. These, these were real, uh, really sick patients who were admitted in the hospital. So what did this study say? Again, in, in JAMA, they just wanted to see ocular manifestations and viral prevalence in the conjunctiva. As I said, now you must understand the concept which I just told you in the beginning of my talk on what I said is conjunctiva is part of the mucosal tract, which is similar, which is continuous. It, it, is, a, it is a continuous mucosal tract from conjunctiva uh, to the larynx and uh, to the esophagus and so any the conjunctiva can reflect what is uh, uh, through its lymphoid follicles it can reflect uh, an inflammatory response to something which is which is happening uh, in the other organs so here again 38 patients of covid uh, only one thing was uh, here 28 were confirmed rt pcr positive from the uh, oropharyngeal swabs well, 10 was based on uh, clinical guidelines, uh, reasonably senior patients uh, with, a, with a mean age of uh, 66 years. Uh, uh, in other words, they were assessed and proven to be COVID positive. Uh, in this group, in the previous study, where uh, the RT-PCR was done in a different lab for a different cohort of patients, it was found that none of the patients had uh, conjunctiva positive for uh, coronavirus in this group where the uh, study was done in the same lab 5.2 percent had a conjunctival swab which was positive uh, for coronavirus still very minimal still very minimal you have to understand uh, if you really look at ac inhibitors uh, the even the presence of ac inhibitors uh, in the conjunctiva is not as so in this as I said even in this uh, we had very negative uh, results with with, with uh, conjunctival swab so what do we have uh, this is my last slide and uh, what do we really have at this point of time this is a new disease we don't know uh, whether uh, we 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 are we have got enough information, but at this point of time, the presence of uh, the virus in the tear fluid seems to be less. But my practical suggestions at this point of time is, when a person presents with conjunctivitis, please ask for a history of fever. If the patient is having an associated fever with conjunctivitis, it would make a lot of sense to direct the patient to a COVID diagnostic center because conjunctivitis 
a very rare presentation has been uh, detected in one patient as the initial manifestation of the disease. Uh, it's also ideal that a person at this point of time who's examining the eye wears the gloves because two to three percent of the tears might contain coronavirus and it also makes a lot of sense uh, to uh, disinfect the gloves uh, after each and every uh, patient. More importantly, you should wear eye protection uh, and uh, bolster it uh, with, with using an eye shield or uh, using some mechanism uh, in the slit lamp uh, which would prevent uh, accidental spillage of uh, uh, any material if and when the patient sneezes uh, accidentally. And Dr. Banu made a very important point. He said, she said, avoid talking to the patient while we are examining. Uh, we can just ex uh, explain to the patient or just coming for a regular refraction and tropicamide would we have transmitted a lot of conjunctival uh, uh, conjunctivitis to the patients previously. We are all guilty of that. Uh, but now we are dealing with a different uh, virulent organism and so it makes a lot of sense to be extra careful in dealing with this patient. The risk is low but the risk is there. That's the message which we want to say at the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.